Guys, welcome to the teardown. Today we're tearing down the Ice Skin Slate 2 Plus. We do a lot of sketching here. There's a, a lot of creativity and, and visualization of products. So this is a device, I guess, meant for that, um, that takes your manual drawings on paper and digitizes them real time to a tablet. We are really interested in the underlying technology. It uses these magnetic rings to figure out the position of your pencil, both in three dimensions and angular. Um, and we want to figure out how they're doing that. So we're going to take it apart. Let the tear down commence. Cool, so we got this thing apart. Um, as we predicted, uh, this film was attached directly to a PCB. We guessed that because we knew that there were going to be sensors. Usually you want to put sensors on something really stable and electrically supportive. Why not put them directly on a PCB? Um, and then uh, we imagined that PCB was uh, glued directly into this tray. It was um, not necessarily glued, it was taped uh, with a giant pile of adhesive. We noticed there was an SD card on the side. We think maybe that's how they're doing the screenless mode. So it would record locally to this and then play back. Otherwise it could just be um, um, memory space for um, holding a program. On the board itself, you can see there's, there's an array of what we think are magnometers. There's a big old processor here. What is that? Um, uh, STM32. That's like a um, M0. Yeah, with like extra pins. And you need a lot of pins because you're talking to a bajillion magnometers. Right. Well, who knows? These may all be I2C, I2C yeah, are on right. some common bus. The lithium polymer battery. We've got a Bluetooth module connected to an uh, antenna. This is a, like a 16 megahertz crystal, and then you've got a 32 um, kilohertz usually for, for timing. Keep in mind that um, part of what this is doing is recording in real time. So um, there must be some timekeeping mechanism um, as part of it. Interesting. And then fascinatingly, there are all of these unpopulated capacitors. Yeah. Those might just be testing points or uh, maybe in the design, there was, there's some option where they need to add some base capacitance to balance it out. Like, Maybe, you know, when you cover a capacitive sensor with material, um, it's going to have its own capacitive effect. So you have to mitigate that by, you know, sometimes introducing your own. And then there's an unpopulated IC right here called U5. Yeah, I wonder what that's doing. Tell um, us, guys. Comment <laughs> below and tell us what you were doing with U5. Very quick illustration here um, of a magnet, <laughs> which is shown in white. And the yellow lines, which are the, the, the magnetic uh, field around it, which looks like a toroid or a donut in real space. The field has its own geometry. And as I tilt the magnet, that donut is going to move in space. Mm -hmm. And so if I have sensors that are positioned in a grid that can sense the magnetic field, I can start to do triangulation between it. I can compare the strengths uh, that one sensor is feeling versus the other. And I can basically just, um, as we saw in their app, I can create a 3D model of um, that magnet and any attached instrument to it. So in more layman's terms, uh, I could imagine all of these magnometers as compasses, right? And uh, if I had a magnet and I held it right here, all of the compasses would point directly to that spot. And so I'd have a lot of data and then we can also use them to triangulate how far off the pad the thing is and what angle it's pointing. So it's calibrated to expect the magnet at a certain distance yes. above. Okay. Um, huh. It's funny that they don't give you any indications, even on the original pencil, of where to put it. Uh, it seems like a, an idea. That would be a good idea. Yeah. I think that the sensor array that they've built works really well. Incredible. Um, it's, it's not anything more than you need. You know, like the number of pieces that are in there. Yeah. Really what it comes down to is the software application. So this is sort of defining what the product is. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there's a, there's a lot farther they could go. Yeah. They, I mean, like, let's be very clear. They worked very hard on this. It's an incredible first, second, and third effort. But all of the other drawing apps are just like getting better and better and better. Procreate is sick. It's like a giant box of art supplies tucked into an iPad. It's very neat. Like, I don't want to disparage this group at all. They have done an incredible job. And like, though the app needs some kinds of improvements, like this is a clearly a phenomenal effort. Um, especially by a startup group. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments what to tear down next. Thanks a lot, Ted. This was fun. All right, see you next time. <laughs> you know that game where they have the tops that battle each other? Yeah. Like, what if this tops. like created like a crazy stadium thing and like it just like really activated? There that we experience. go. I think that's fun. Hasbro, come talk to us. Some other ideas that come to mind are putting magnets inside of play characters and having this be the play mat for those characters. Um, you could even know how high they were, like yeah. in terms of, you could do like a dollhouse and you would know exactly where everything is in the dollhouse. And then you can recreate or replay that entire scene. That's kind of fun. Oh, that'd be so fun. You could do like a movie maker thing and like you have your, like you do like a puppet show and then it would like, that's, that's cool, Ted. Yeah. Hasbro, come talk to us.